Graphs are a way to quickly see what's happening when we compare two different quantities. We're going to begin what's called relations and functions in mathematics. And starting with relations, a relation, if you think about the root word for relationship, it's where we have a connection between two different amounts or two different quantities. When we create a graph, one of those topics or quantities we label on the x-axis, the other topic or quantity we label on the y-axis. Now I have four different graphs here. Two of them show a constant rate of change, one of them shows no rate of change, and one of them shows a rate of change that is not constant. I want you to pause the video and label which one you think is which. Okay. We don't know what we're comparing in any of these graphs, but I'm going to start with the last graph and let's just say that the x-axis represents time. As time is passing, we're not increasing or decreasing. We have a straight horizontal line there. So this is the one where there's no rate of change being shown. The two that are constant rates of change are the first two because again, if we assume that this is time, and it may not be, but it would apply to whatever the graph represents in these two cases, we are increasing steadily at the same amount as time passes. In the second one, we're decreasing steadily at the same amount as time passes. So both of those graphs are a constant rate of change. The one on the left, this one here has a positive slope. We're rising to the right. The second one has a negative slope. We're falling as we move from left to right. The third graph does not have a rate of change that's constant. You can see we increase very quickly in the beginning and then it tapers off here and the rate of change starts to slow down. All right, so we know that that straight line is what represents a constant rate of change. It is the steepness of that line that indicates our rate of change. So I've got two more graphs here. I want you to take a look at both of these graphs. And in the first case, we have two lines, A and B. One of them is rising or increasing at a faster rate than the other. I want you to figure out which one do you think is the one that has a faster rate of increase. If you guessed A, you are correct. A does have the faster rate of increase. And again, we don't know what the x-axis or the y-axis represent, but I'm going to assume the x-axis represents time. So because both of these lines started at the same place, if I pick a point in time, let's say this point, and go straight up, I can see that line B, in that length of time, I got to here. Let's just say that's the distance I got to. That same point of time, if I go up to line A, I can see that I managed to get a lot further if this is distance on the y-axis. So we can see that A is increasing at a faster rate than B is. In the second graph, we have a rate of decrease. Both of those lines are falling as we move from left to right. I want you to take a look and predict which of those do you think has a faster rate of decrease? And if you guessed B, you are right. So in the first one, A has the faster rate of decrease or increase. In the second one, B has the faster rate of decrease. And it's a similar concept. If we take a point on the x-axis, let's say we take here. We can see that both of these graphs started when time was zero, if this is time. So they both begin in the same place. So if I go from here to this amount of time, I can see that B, I got to, let's say, a distance of that. A, at that same point in time, I got a distance to there. So we can see, maybe let's just draw this in here so we can see it. So I'm going to take that point in time, I'm going to go straight up, and I'm going to go straight up. We can see that B is now at this distance. We can see A is now at that distance. So when we take a look at this, because both started at the same point, when we get to this point in time, we can see that clearly B has decreased. They've changed their distance a lot faster than A has. The goal for today is to be able to visually represent a scenario on a graph and to be able to take a graph and describe what's happening in that scenario. So we have four different graphs here and four different scenarios. I'm going to get you to pause the video in a second and to match which scenario goes with which graph. And you're going to notice that in each of these cases, we don't have labels on either of the axes. The first thing you want to do is identify what are the two things we're comparing. So for example, in the first one, we're comparing the temperature to the time. So 
So pick out, first of all, what are the two things we're comparing? And then I want you to think which of those is going to go on the X axis, which of those is going to go on the Y axis, and then what graph is going to present that scenario. Okay, so pause me now and see how you do with this one. How did you do? In the first example, we already identified that we're comparing the temperature and the time. Time often goes on the x-axis. So in this case, if we know that time is passing, if we have a cup of hot chocolate, we know whatever the temperature is initially, it's going to cool down over the course of time. So if you take a look at our choices, the only graph that shows that negative slope is graph number C, or letter C. As time is passing, we can see that the temperature is decreasing. Now, this is not a constant rate of change. If you think about science, we know that in the beginning, it's going to cool very quickly. And then as time passes, it's going to start to taper off a little bit. Each one of the remaining graphs also has time on the x-axis. It's not explicit in the question, but if we take a look at what we do know, we have speed, we have distance, and we have height. The easiest one to start with is probably graph A because it's the only one where we have something that's going up and then coming down. So this would be the soccer ball. As time passes, we kick it, it goes up in the air, and this is the height off the ground. It comes back down and hits the ground again. So we know graph A is going to be the soccer ball in statement number four. That leaves us with two and three as the remaining statements and graphs B and D as the remaining graphs. Statement number three is the distance a person walks during a hike. I decided that the best graph to represent that would probably be this one, where we can see that, again, as time is passing, this is the distance they are away from their starting point. So this is assuming that the person is traveling at a constant rate because we know they have that straight linear line. That leaves us with graph B, which I matched up with the car accelerating. And I chose to put V for velocity here. So velocity is speed with direction. So in this particular case, we can see that we are accelerating. So we're increasing in speed at a constant rate. And then once we get to the speed that we want to travel at, we are moving at that constant speed. This particular graph represents a wakeboarder. Over the course of time, we can see his distance from where he starts. So time is passing, and this is the distance from the starting point. I want you to create a scenario, come up with a story. What's happening as the wakeboarder goes through time? So can you use the key pieces on the graph to describe what may be going on? And if you're not sure what a wakeboard is, then I'll put a picture up here in a second and then you can pause the video and make your story. I'm sad I don't get to hear your stories because I'm sure you have a lot of creative detail in yours. But here are the main points that we want to uh, focus on. In the beginning, you can see that we are moving slowly away from our starting point and then we begin to pick up the speed at which we're moving away. At this point in time, we are most likely stopped because time is passing, but we're not actually changing our distance. So we're either on a path where the distance is somehow not changing from the starting point, or we're just not moving. We're falling off and we're in the water, something like that. We get back on the weight board, get, board again and we get going. So we start moving away. And at this point, we switch direction because we start coming back to where our starting point is. So we get back on the, or we somehow switch direction. We turn around and we start moving back fairly quickly. And then at this point in time, again, we're stopped. So maybe the person fell into the water. Time is passing, but the distance is not changing. And then here we continue to move back to the point at which we started. And the speed at which we're traveling here is not as uh, fast as we were traveling here because our line is not quite as steep. So those are the key points in your story that you want to focus on. To conclude, we're going to draw one last graph to represent a scenario. And in this particular question, it tells us that the graph we draw is going to be a distance time graph. So we're going to go over to the side here and we're going to draw our y axes and our x axes. And we're going to label them with specific measurements as well as units because you can see we have exact distances given to us. 
If the two things we're comparing are distance and time, time would be our independent variable that will go on the x-axis. Distance will be our dependent variable that goes on the y-axis. And we're going to need a scale because we do have specific measurements in here. So I want you to take the information you're given and see if you can create a graph that would represent this. Pause the video and then come back and see how you did. Because we aren't given any specific time values, I didn't put a scale on my x-axis, I just left it with um, a label of time. We know Josephine leaves her home and walks to the store. So that's my first line segment here. And then she buys a drink. So I have a horizontal line because time is going to pass and her distance isn't changing. She's going to be at the store. She then jogs to her friend's house. And if we go back over here, we can see that if this is Josephine's house, her friend's house is in total four kilometers away from her house. So at four kilometers here, she needs to reach her friend's house. And again, I'm going to have a line that has a steeper slope than what I started with because here she's walking, here she's jogging. So she's gonna be moving faster. She then visits her friend for a while. So again, we have a horizontal line. There's no rate of change. Time is passing, but she's not moving from that point she's at. She then leaves her friend's house and runs directly home. And this last line statement has the steepest slope because here she's going to be jogging, here she's going to be running. So I tried to make that, I could have probably gone a little bit steeper even. But generally speaking, that's the kind of graph that we wanna to have to represent that scenario.